You're listening to the Feel Good Astrology Podcast with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request your personal reading, go to feelgoodastrology.com. Hey, welcome back to Feel Good Astrology. It's Louisa Tanner Munson, and I'm absolutely delighted to share with you my thoughts about. Um, the March forecast uh, for 2023. Um, I need to give some um, real thanks, actually, to my good pal, um, Helen, um, Helen Nachintu from Venus Health Academy, because I was just on her show talking about the March forecast. And so it's really helped to get it absolutely um, really clear and concise in my own thinking. So um, it's with her and, and with great thanks to her and compassion, you know, for her giving me the chance to run through it already. <laughs> and in fact, I'm going to put a link below to her channel. So just look below um, because you might find a little bit more information in there as well. Um, you know, there's so many different ways of sharing this information, isn't there? So March is a big month and you might already have um, a strong feeling about that. Um, there's quite a few things happening and probably the easiest way for me to describe it is to just break it down week by week. Um, I'm not going to talk about um, everything, you know, like the moon changing, you know, from sign to sign and things like that. I, I just want to talk about the main things. And from my perspective, the main things worthy of um, me talking about is the um, full moon on the 7th. The 7th is a huge day. Um, on that day, Saturn also changes signs into the sign of Pisces. Um, in week two, the big news is the conjunction between Jupiter and Chiron. Um, in week three, we've got the equinox, which sets the scene, sets sets us ahead for the month, you know, like uh, not the month, the season. Um, it's the, the official start of spring and it's the official start of the zodiac. Um, and then the very next day, we've got the new moon. So it's interesting. We've got a new moon Um you know, in March, that's at zero degrees in the sign of Aries, which is like zero point energy, which is always quite exciting. And then finally, we've got um, week four and we've got Pluto changing into the signs of Aquarius. Now, before I get going, I do want to sort of let you know ahead of time that I've recorded a lot of stuff already about these energies. So for instance, if you want to understand the energy of Saturn in Pisces, then there is a um, um, a standalone video, just, just look in the videos below. I think it's called, um, the return to spiritual order maybe, or something similar like that. Um, so I've explored Saturn in Pisces in a great load of detail. I've also, um, on another video, I think it's called heal thyself. Um, you know, I've examined the, um, uh, Jupiter and Chiron conjunction um, and spoken at length about that. I've also um, released a sign by sign um, series of videos letting you know how the Jupiter Chiron event, the Saturn in Pisces and the Pluto in Aquarius is going to set you up for the next um, months, for the next two years and even for the next 20 years. So watch out for those. They're really concise. They're about 10 minutes. And like I said, I've done them sign by sign. So there's a lot of support for you for March already. Now I was saying to Helen earlier that I actually see that March is a bit like, there are these moments in time that happen that everyone remembers where they were when it happened. And it's a bit like um, the phenomenon of COVID. Um, you know, it, it started and it set the scene for the next three or four years. Um, and it's kind of still going, isn't it? You know, I say four years because I'm anticipating that that narrative is still going on. Um, March, as far as I can see, is going to be setting the narrative for many years to come. Um, and I think there's going to be a few different events where we say, oh, yeah, I remember when that happened, you know, and already. And, and this is this is what I always observe um, is we start having events just either side of these like big astrological times. So for instance, you know, there's a lot of train derailments at the moment. There's lots of chemical um, fires. There's um, rumblings of war, um, rumblings, or there is a war, and then there's rumblings of a world war, um, market instability. There's an instability of resources in terms of food, clean water, energy. There's Nord Stream. Okay, that was that happened last year, but there's new information coming out about it. There's always a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Um, and so I think March is going to really start to bring them to the fore. So anyway, week one, let's have a look at that. Um, I'm also checking 
in my eph ephemeris. Look at all those yellow marks. They're all these things. I'm like, oh, that's that needs to be mentioned. <laughs> so actually on the first day of March, um, which is next Wednesday, I'm recording this actually on the 23rd of February. Um, Mercury's changing signs. Um, or oh, sorry, on the 2nd of March, Mercury's changing signs from um from Aquarius into Pisces and that is setting the scene for us to start thinking emotionally and starting to listen to our body and starting to listen to our intuition a little bit. Mercury is not very happy in the sign of Pisces but um, it's all right. Um, where am I? Where am I? Okay yeah and then on the 7th we've got this um, full moon that is occurring. Now this is this is quite um, um, a, a violent full moon i would say so the full moon happens when the sun and the moon are in opposite sides like exactly 180 degrees away from each other and then exactly 90 degrees away from the moon and also 90 degrees away from the sun we've got we've got mars and so it's known as a t square it makes us a nice little right angle triangle now um when when the moon is square to Mars, we have um, inflated energy. People start to be very, very emotional and they feel hurt. They feel triggered, but they don't have the wherewithal to um, sit back, count to five and and talk themselves down. What tends to happen is people flare up straight away and they start um, kind of attacking um you know, so so they transfer the feeling of emotional hurt into kind of physical hurt. They, they try to score points. So it's, it's a lot of bickering. Um, and it's the kind of energy you might see with kids, um, you know, when they're playing out their hurts and they don't have the right words to use to say, actually, I'm feeling really hurt by that. And of course, if you are able to express things like that in that way, that's a game changer, isn't it? You know, like in your interactions, if you're able to say, whoa, you need to stop right there. I'm really triggered by that. And here's why. Then you can start to have a conversation. Um, so there's definitely that energy going on on the day of the full moon. Um, also, the sun is in a square to Mars, and that makes us feel a lot bolder, a lot more courageous, a lot more angry. Um, we want to take up space. We want other people to move out of our space. And so it's kind of warlike. You know, there's this kind of real sort of posturing going on. Now, on the same day, we've also got this lovely trine with Uranus and a sextile with Uranus to the sun and the moon. And so I see these as release points. So, yes, we are feeling triggered. But if we can use our amazing um, ability to tune in, our intuition, if we can meditate, if we can space out, if we can do something that gives us space. That's the most important thing is we need as much space as we can get on the seventh. So um, whatever you do to create that, that feeling of space and the luxury of self, you know, where you're not feeling everything else crowding in on you. Now, one practice that I do quite a bit, um, and I have to thank the guys over at Access Consciousness for this, um, because whilst I was, I've been doing it a lot in my life, they have described it in a way that really works for me. Um, but Dane here, Dr. Dane here and, um, um, all the other people over at Access Consciousness, there's, there's many of them, but Dane is the one that I really follow the most. Um, he will do sort of like energy pulls, but he will imagine expanding his body, uh, like his physical state. So if you can imagine just to create some space for yourself, um, so that you can hear yourself. So you're not hearing all these other people kind of imposing on you, but you, um, and I always close my eyes when I do this, but I imagine myself growing, um, I imagine myself twice my size. I imagine myself filling this room. I imagine myself bigger than the house and so on and so forth. And you can expand as high up as you want. You could also minimize yourself, but, um, and, and I'm sure that could help you feel really tiny and that you could hide somewhere. But I find getting bigger is, is, is really cool because it gives you the space. It's almost like drinking, um, a, a glass of clean, cool water all of a sudden you feel a sense of purity um, and the things that maybe were irritating and really loud and in your ear, they th suddenly there's distance. It's a bit like rising up. If you're flying, like um, if you imagine that you're looking down on yourself in a, a third party way. And of course, like things like NLP and hypnosis also help to create that space. You might have your own way of doing it, like yoga, for instance, or just going for a run and feeling that you're letting off tension. But I think the more you can do something like that, the easier this full moon is going to be. And on the same day of the full moon, Saturn moves into the sign of Pisces, which is describing how we are, A, grounding spirituality, but it also shows where we might get a bit confused about 
what has gone on um, in the last Saturn time. So previously Saturn's been in Aquarius and um, there's been lots of legislation. Saturn loves legislation and it really represents the middle management of the world. So all your governments, your schools, your police, you know, your health authorities, all these authorities that are saying this is how it has to be. And during the Saturn and Aquarius time, there's been a lot of emphasis put on serving everyone to be able to serve you. Um, and actually, as Saturn comes into Pisces, uh, my main distinction is we're awakening to this feeling that actually something's gone amiss and we're not quite sure. There's the feeling that we're traumatized. There's the potential feeling that we are um, in a state of like we've been gaslit to, we've been lied to, we've been manipulated and things haven't been very clear. And so what I really see is as Saturn goes into Pisces, initially there is this time of confusion. There's this time of thinking, what happened there? Wow. And, 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 and I think it, it could be a time when people actually get quite depressed. So I really think the more you can get used to creating space for yourself maybe through a meditative practice. I actually find singing really helpful, you know, opens the heart and, and it kind of dispels anything else. Um, but you'll find your own practice, your own way. Um, and in this Saturn in Pisces time, I think we can actually start to ground some of our spiritual sensitivities and, and, and help, help find a place for them, you know? So it's, it's a really interesting time. Um, and the more you can be free and spontaneous with yourself and spacious with yourself and creative and inventive and new, the better. Um, if it takes you out of um, anger and boxes and it has to be like this. So just play with that. Um, now, the big thing about week two is we've got the healing conjunction of Jupiter and Chiron. And I've spoken about this in the video. It happens every 14 years. Um, the last time it happened in 14 years ago was um, in the sign of Aquarius. Um, it sets the scene for a new healing consideration. Um, this is happening in the sign of Aries and it's marking um, a return to personal healing. It's healing the identity and it's healing the sense of self and it's healing our path to individualism and our ability to know where our boundaries are. And this really fits in directly from what we've been talking about. You know, it, it feels like our boundaries haven't been um, very well observed. You know, we've been told to consider other people more importantly than ourselves. And, and I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, by the way. I don't want to judge any of it. it I'm just observing that this has happened. You know, lots of people have, um, over these last few years, have learned from new guidelines that, you know, we've been born racist. Um, that's quite a thing for people to take on board, um, whether it's true or not, you know, um, and, you know, we, we have learned so many different things about privilege and, and yet it feels like these tools have been used as a stick to beat us with rather than something that we can learn and grow from and have a discussion about. So I do feel that the sat, the, Jupiter and Chiron healing in the sign of Aries is about us saying, okay, I hear all this stuff that's being levied at me. And yes, it has felt a bit like a personal attack. And yet I'm, I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to sit with it. And I also need to know how I can be an individual. I need to know how I can take action for myself. Um, and so I really see that we are going through this battle of them versus us, which is very much a full moon kind of thing. And also, you know, where is my boundary? What do I consent to? What do I allow? What do I allow to be taken from me? And all of these kinds of considerations are coming up. So um, week two is particularly sensitive. Um, I would say that if people are, um, I would say if people are being a bit difficult, um, tune in, like get away from them as soon as you can, first of all, but then tune in and think, okay, what are they triggering in me that I'm uncomfortable about? What does it remind me of? Um, it's nearly always, there's, there will be a story behind it. I'm pretty sure of that, you know, because we don't get triggered unless we've already got upset or angry or hurt or accused of something um, from the past. So it's really important to tune in and work out where the first um, event occurred, you know, because 
I think people are showing up right now. You know how there are mirrors <laughs> and, and people show up as mirrors to you and we do projections. We project our fears onto other people. I think right now there is this mutuality where we are absolutely serving each other by projecting the worst onto each other rather than what's the best. And so what's coming up is this like emergence, like this quicker and quicker emergence of what's going on. So yeah, observe when people are, are um, feeling too close, they've gone through your boundaries, get away from them as soon as possible, but taking take it as a lesson and recognize, okay, there's something I need to learn here. Um, and, and don't be afraid to seek help if you need it. We all need help. Um, and, and also be discerning where you get your help from <laughs> because the healers are also going through this. In fact, they're the first to go through it because they're so um, open to healing. So there you go. <laughs> Another thing um, worth just mentioning um, before moving on to week um, week three is we've got um, Venus changing signs from Aries into Taurus. That's great because we've got more sensuousness coming in and that will be very helpful. Um, Venus is very happy in the sign of Taurus. She rules Taurus. So we can start to be a bit kinder to our bodies, feel a bit of luxury and comfort. Um, and we're finding our voices more. Venus has got a nice sound in Taurus. Um, and also we've got, <laughs> by this time, we've also got Mercury coming into Aries. So what that's symbolizing to me is that we're getting more comfortable in our body and we're also ready to speak from our own individuality. So, you know, we're comfortable to assert ourselves. That's kind of nice. I like that. Now, week three. <laughs> um, so on the 20th, we've got the equinox, which is setting the scene for the um, new season. And um, as we go into... Um, as, as the sun moves into the sign of Aries, zero degrees in the sign of Aries, it makes an opposition with Ceres. Ceres is mother nature. Um, she observes all the cycles of life, the, the birth, the death. She grieves. She is about natural order. Um, and the sun is in opposition to it. So it's like the sun represents the individual and this is Ceres. This is like nature. And they are completely opposed from each other. And and this is how we're starting this, this new season. Now I talk about this quite a lot in, in the interview, um, or the, the chat I have with Helen from Venus health Academy. And like I said, I will put a link in below so you can watch that too. And please do subscribe to her channel as well, because she puts a lot of time and effort into communicating great things. And if you're interested in health, by the way, it's worth like checking her out. Um, but what I really see here is our greatest gift, um, as we move into spring is to learn our relationship with nature and reconnect with nature. Um, I also see this as a resourcing issue because um, at the time of the um, equinox, we've got this lovely Venus, which is about bounty. Venus in the sign of Taurus is we're bountiful. There's so much out there. We've got um, Juno, which is about higher love and also commitment and dedication um, and sharing everything. Um, in the sign of Taurus, which is about our resources, in particular natural ones like food and water. <laughs> um and also um, banking um, is covered by Taurus. Um, we might be looking at the lands, um, property and things like that. But also um, I think healthcare is, is also something that there's an abundance of natural things out there for people. The North Node is also there. So it feels like humanity is learning about being comfortable in their bodies and, and being part of the natural order of things. And yet we've got Pluto square to this abundance. Uh, so it's kind of showing that there are people governing the release of all of the things that we need. And then in opposition to Pluto, we've got, um, net, um, we've got, um, Lilith and Lilith is square to all this natural abundance as well. And it's showing a resentment of things being held back. I, I actually think we may be going into times where we need to, um, really look after our resources, uh, maybe even an emergency situation. I mean, the whole of March looks quite warlike to me and kind of feast or famine. And I would say that the 20th of March, which represents the equinox, is really highlighting to us that there is an abundance of everything, possibly that there is free energy. I'm pretty sure of that, um, that there is free energy. Um, and there is this kind of very open knowledge that our resources have either been held back for material gain, or they've been interfered with or manipulated as represented by um, Pluto. 
Um, and there's a mass resentment swelling about this. Um, and so what I would absolutely recommend is sure that's what's going on on the earth right now. Um, and it's important to observe that and have empathy, um, you know, where we, where we feel it arising in us, where we feel the injustice arising in us, it's, it's okay to feel, um, empathy for people, um, and to send them sort of the energy of love, um, you know, and, and peace and have, have good, um, intentions for them. But the most important thing I think on the 20th of equinox, uh, the 20th of March, which is the equinox is that we need to get into balance with ourselves and, and find our own connection to our resources. So make sure you've got a good supply of clean water and food. I've been recommending that for a long time. I have a bit of a prepper mindset, I have to say. Um, but I, I you know, if, if your water supply is messed up, there's not much you can do about it and it, it affects things. Um, you only have to look at what's going on currently in East Palestine, Ohio. Um, and there are lots of um, water sources right now that are being poisoned. There's lots of chemical fires, you know, obviously Turkey and Syria, there's earthquakes and we see people without resources. Get your resources set up. You can't be ready for everything, but at least know that you've got um, access to clean water, that you've got a first aid kit, get yourself in order, care for you. That's the main part, I think, is care for you because you won't be able to help anyone else if if you haven't taken care of yourself. So do that. The next day is the new moon. And so you've got the sun and the moon at zero degrees in Aries. Now, zero degrees in Aries is the beginning of the zodiac story. Um, according to tropical astrology, um, there will be some sidereal astrologers that will say, hang on a second, I don't agree with that. It's okay. It's a question of where do you set your time for, but zero degrees Aries is an, is is where lots of people have um, set their clock to, and it's interesting that we've got this new moon taking place just after the equinox at zero degrees in the sign of Aries. It's an indication that we are into a new stage. We're into a new human stage. Things are going to start to rocket and shoot up. Um, it's it's a really, really strong time. Um, I probably don't need to say much more about it. I may even record something about the equinox um, closer to the time. Um, now, the last thing, and this is what's happening really in week three, um, there's a couple of things. The first one, this is the main one, is that Pluto is changing signs from Capricorn into the sign of Aquarius. He's not in Aquarius for very long. Um, he is going to um, reverse out. Um I think in May, <laughs> and then he will be back into Aquarius. But this is his first touch in the sign of Aquarius. Now, Pluto often takes, you know, 20 years or so to go through a sign. Um, and he moves very, very slowly. That's why um, if Pluto is on your sun or on your moon, um, it gets quite difficult um, because it, it's a very oppressive energy and it, it, it forces you to really look at what you're trying to control in your life. And often when Pluto is involved, we have to yield something. We have to give something up. Uh, we have to go into a, a position of sacrifice, which can feel very, very uncomfortable for people. But um, this is this is actually, um, you know, Pluto is making his way into Aquarius. We're going to get a taster for what the next 20 years is going to be like. Um, now, with all planets and people, with everything, there's a good and a bad side. There's a um, a desirable and a less desirable flip side to the energy that it represents. And so with Pluto, we have the energy of control um, and, and, and maintaining things combined with Aquarius, which is about social issues. So things like climate, uh, gender, um, equality, diversity, the sharing of wealth. Um, now, that, that will be expressed in a dark and a light way simultaneously. Um, so you may find that one solution of a one world government um, with social credit scores, um, AI, with chips, with um, um, that we're all connected to the Internet of Things. Um, from my perspective, and this is just my own belief, that sounds a little heavy handed in the idea of creating a utopia where like their catchphrase, the WEF catchphrase of um, where you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. That sounds like just um, kind of dressing up the idea of a very rampant and very um, 
squashing communism. Um, and I could be wrong, but hey, um, I also see Pluto in Aquarius could actually help us bring in a time where resources are shared and and where we all feel like we have, like, why do we have to have nothing and all be happy? Why can't we all have everything and be happy? Isn't that a concept? And that might be possible. And I don't think that kind of possibility arises out of feeling like we're into a disaster and if you've got something, you're depriving someone else of something, you know, the our whole idea that that's premised on this idea that everything is limited, that our resources are limited. And that appears to be true from what we've been told on the media and through celebrity culture and through our governments. And yet I don't know if that is true. You know, we've been told that energy is limited and yet I have seen patents for free energy that have um, mysteriously um, been toned down. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different things going on. We may well find ourselves going into a time where the sharing of resources and the creating of a, a utopia, um, are, are brought about and AI might have something to do with it. Um, I'm pretty sure it will. Um, you know, we are, we are in a, an experiment, you know, each time Pluto moves into a, a new part of, um, the Zodiac and the sky, there is a new control drama going on. And with that, there's things that we give up. And with that, there's things that we release joyfully. So who knows how that will go? It could be our worst nightmare. It could be our best nightmare, uh, our best dream, sorry, our best manifestation. Mostly it depends on your point of view and what you want to seek to create in the world. So, um, this, this could be something that looks terrible, but I actually think March is the turning point because we often don't um, invent things, don't think about things, can't recreate things when we're not aware that there is a situation or something to heal or something to work on. And I think actually what's going on in March is we are given an opportunity to see that there is a potential to heal. There is a need for us to come together um, and we may decide that we want to come together and be governed um, by people that think they know us, or we might come together and realize that we can manage ourselves at a local level and that we can come together and, and work locally. Who knows how this is going to go? Um, now, I've recorded, like I said, um, something about Saturn in Pisces um, and also about the Chiron and Jupiter um, conjunction. Um, I've also done the 10 minute recording. So if any of this has really sort of triggered you, or maybe do you think, oh, I need to, I need to know more, then check those resources out. I will be recording something quite lengthy about Pluto in Aquarius. I'm not in a rush to do it because Pluto is going to be in Aquarius for 20 years. So I've got plenty of time, um, but there will be some more recordings. So if you haven't already subscribed and you think this will be useful, then please do subscribe. Um, I wouldn't click the notification bell just because every month I'm uploading quite a lot. Um, and if you find having lots of emails <laughs> distracting, then don't, don't notify yourself unless you're happy with that. Um, but please do subscribe and feel free to share as well. Anyway, um, wishing you a fantastic March. Um, if, if you, in particular, if you have a very strong Aquarius or Pisces influence in your chart and you're wanting to explore it at a deeper level, um, I would absolutely recommend coming into membership with me. Um, I have a variety of plans, but what is most useful, I think, is working with people on a month by month basis. So, um, for instance, um, I, I have something called the guidance plan and, and each month I will message you and say, Hey, I'm about to record for you. It's, it's your time for your uh, monthly update. And I'll ask you what's on your mind and what you're wanting to achieve. And, and, um, then based on what you share with me, I will record an individual reading for your month ahead, which is approximately 20 minutes, usually more. You also get the chance to ask me a question each month. So if something comes up, you know, if you have to make a, a choice about something, um, then I will record something for you, um, um, and, and send it to you usually within a couple of days. Um, and so I'm working with you 
on a month by month basis. So if you're trying to launch a business or you're planning something, or if you're starting a family, or if you're considering immigration, any of these big life changing things, which is going on for all of us at the moment, then I'm able to guide you through it on a month by month basis. You also each year get um, a free year update um, at the time of your birthday as well, if you've been a member for over three months. And if you did want to buy or invest in a larger reading, like a 90 minute one, you get 40% discount. So I, I see that membership is actually a no brainer. <laughs> it's, it's really quite useful. Um, and if you were actually wanting a bit of guidance, um, but also to be really listened to and really heard, then I also have the, the coaching plan, which has all of what I've already shared with you, but you also have um, either a weekly, a fortnightly or a monthly video call with me where I really just sit back and, and listen to you, you know, really listen to what's going on, um, really reflect on it. I'm trained outside of astrology. I'm, I'm trained in NLP and hypnotherapy and also timeline therapy. And I've also got lots, you know, other qualifications. Um, but I really just listen to you and I tune in. And sometimes that's what we need. Um you know, to get through these strange times where we're not sure what the narrative is out there, um, let alone what our own narrative is. So, you know, I give you the chance to hear yourself and create a safe space for you. So anyway, please do check that out. It's um, go to feelgoodastrology.com if you want to know more or just send me an email. It's louisatanamunson at gmail.com and um, I'll, I'll be very happy to set up a call and just have a chat with you about it. Anyway, lots and lots and lots of love to you wherever you are in the world. Thank you once again for checking in with me. I really appreciate it. Um, stay cool. <laughs> Get as much space as you can. And um, we're going to get through this. See you next month. You've been listening to the Feel Good Astrology podcast with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request your personal reading, go to feelgoodastrology.com.